Hello, and welcome to Logistically Speaking, a weekly podcast where we bring together some of the most interesting thought leaders in the world of logistics and supply chain management, discuss current events, insights, as well as best practices. Logistically Speaking is brought to you by Bring, the enterprise class last mile logistics platform. All right, guys, welcome to the show. This is episode number two of Logistically Speaking. Um, Today, I have a really uh, great guest. Uh, His name is Marcus Hoot. He's the co-founder of Dutch Express, which is a uh, New York-based courier service. Um, I'm going to let him introduce himself and tell a little bit about himself, but I just want to kind of reiterate the idea of what this podcast is all about. Um, It's a weekly podcast that brings people from the logistics, supply chain, shipping, delivery industry to talk about you know relevant topics, um, you know, and, and the real goal is to really build a community around this. I want people engaging around the content um, and uh, you know create information back and forth so we can help each other, um, you know, in this industry. Um, and so that that's where the idea of the logistically speaking um, podcast came from. And and um, I was put in touch with Marcus, and I think you know some of the ideas we had. Prior to, to the podcast, what we were discussing would be very interesting. So with that, I'm going to let Marcus introduce himself a little bit, and then we'll, we'll get into it. Okay. Hi, I'm, uh, I'm Marcus. I'm co-owner, co-founder of Dutch Express, a on-demand um, delivery service in greater New York City. Um, we started uh, together with my business partner, um Dutch Express about five years ago <clears throat> where we saw um in the on the ma- on demand market a huge opportunity. In the on demand market back in the eighties, nineties was an extremely uh big um industry, extremely large industry, sorry, where uh you saw packages, especially envelopes going back and forth from uh, attorneys, uh, architects, fashion industry, photo shoots, um, you mention it. At that time, the email piece of this uh, was not as big as it is now. So what you saw back in the 90s, that email became more and more popular, and you saw that it hurt and it damaged the, the same-day delivery market a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, the amount of deliveries went down, uh, the amount of messengers went down. Um, I don't like to call them messengers. I think messengers is very old fashioned. I prefer to call them DAs, which is delivery associates. Mm-hmm. Um, where we saw about five years ago a new trend coming up in the market <laughs> where um, we saw a huge opportunity in the retail, food, uh, and the food market. The other part was when we started, uh, the technology was still far behind. Uh, companies like Bring, like Uber, uh, Postmates did not exist. And um, what you saw was that most traditional uh, courier companies, they were using uh, paper manifests, where Dutch Express was the first company in, uh, in New York to introduce the digital manifest where uh, we were able to dispatch our work uh, through an application. So it became much more efficient, much faster, much more reliable, and a much higher level of customer service. Mm. Um, This is one of the the, the, the parts where we have seen that the, the messenger industry was lacking in the past. What you saw was a messenger came to pick it up, uh, to pick up your package, and then what happened with your package? Where is it? Where is it? You want to know when it gets delivered. You want to track and trace when it gets delivered. Um, and at that time, that did not exist. So what happened was you as a customer wanted to know where your package was. You had to call the messenger company. The messenger company would call the DA. Um, the DA was at that moment just not available. He was in the subway or he was underground or uh, he was just doing a delivery. You as a consumer had to wait uh, for this messenger to get to give feedback to the dispatcher so you could hear uh, where your package was, where we were the first one where we had uh, live tracking and tracing, not for the customer, but for the, uh, for the dispatcher. 
Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting that um, you were talking about how in the 80s and 90s, how, you know, on-demand was very big and it was about, you know, uh, moving uh, letters and, and messages back and forth, for legal and otherwise. Um, and it's interesting because I think today most people, when you say on-demand, they think of like, you know, Uber and stuff. But it, you're right. It, it was this, it was something that was very popular. And then obviously email came around and, and completely disrupted that whole thing. Um, but mm -hmm. now, like you said, you know, it, it, it you know, in the last few years, retail, food, all these things, you know, in New York City, you see guys on bikes doing deliveries everywhere. Um, Correct. Yeah. And so that's like, it's a really interesting thing that it was kind of this, it was this, this thing that, that was really popular and then it was kind of, um, kind of knocked off by the digital age and now it's come back. What do you think kind of spurred that um, resurgence of on-demand and same-day deliveries um, that we're seeing now? Um, it, it's a market that became a, a convenience market um, where it used to be a speed market, which means that if you wanted to get something, the mindset was you want it now, ASAP. Um, where you currently see is that with companies like Uber, who of course entered the on-demand market through their, uh, through their taxi app, uh, that the demand for uh, for getting uh, products or things delivered or food delivered uh, to your house uh, became a an, an inconvenience. So uh, you used to call with the Chinese restaurants. Then you had the trend that uh, seamless uh, came into the market with an uh, online application or an online uh, solution where you could order directly through uh, through the web. Uh, and now you order through a company like Postmates. People got more used to it. You also have big companies like uh, Amazon or uh, Google with Google Express and Amazon with Amazon Prime now, who uh, gave an additional boost. Uh, in New York, you can buy something on an Amazon Prime Now app and you can get it delivered within an hour. Um, so imagine now you are in urgent need of... Um, a birthday present for uh, a classmate of your uh, of your children, and you can get your uh, your Lego books uh, delivered within an hour. Right. That being said, um, we see a big difference currently. In and I mentioned this before that there is a change in this market from a speed market to a convenience market. Um, and what I'm trying to say is, you're going now to Amazon. You want to buy, let's say, let's keep calling this, uh, this Lego box, but you're still in your office. You're going to be home tonight between 6 and 8. Um, and it's now 10 a.m. So you can schedule your delivery between 6 and 8 for tonight. So it means speed became less uh, important. It's now more about the accuracy and the convenience to get it delivered when you want it delivered. Mm -hmm. So the three terms I would like to use is wherever you want it, when you want it, and what you want. So um, you're sitting in Central Park, New York. Um, you want uh, a, a can of beer delivered to where you're at. Um, this is currently with technology. Is this possible? And when you want it. So it, it goes further and further. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, do you think that you're talking about Amazon and how Google, for example, you can get something in an hour? Do you think that uh, Amazon and Google and um, some of these other businesses that are offering on the the retail side or the food side, um, you know, this the convenience or the or the speed to delivery aspect? Do you think there's pressure now on some of the other um, retailers or restaurants that they need to keep up because now this has become an expectation that everyone is starting to have? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you see now that slowly big companies, and I'm talking about uh, um, companies with multiple stores, the big box stores, uh, which I like call as an example, <laughs> uh, Food Locker, mm -hmm. who now provides a solution for um, you can order online and then you can choose to pick it up in your store. 
Right. Um, I'm very, I'm very, I know from experience that very soon this is going to change. You order something from foodlocker.com, it's available in one of the retail locations in New York, and you will get it delivered uh, again wherever and whenever you want it. So you will see that Amazon, and, and, and especially Amazon, uh, who is pushing this market extremely hard, as I see this as a huge opportunity. Um, that other companies have to has to follow because uh, the biggest fear for all the retailers in uh, in the United States is Amazon. It's their biggest competitor. Right. Yeah, and you see that other retailers are kind of trying to uh, keep up with uh, Amazon's online presence. For example, you know, um, Walmart just bought Jet.com, and uh, Best Buy yes. is moving into the is trying to expand in the online. So it really seems like. John has, is like the first mover in a lot of stuff, uh, and so it's interesting. And you know, I'm seeing when I walk down the street in New York, I see it. You know, I see the I see the couriers uh, drive. You know, on their bikes everywhere. I see the the on demand delivery, the Postmates, everybody showing up. So you, you can see it grow in front of your eyes. Um, mm-hmm. And so it's I, I, it's very interesting. I'm sure it's very exciting for you. Um, what do you think about some of the issues that uh, some of the on demand um, delivery startups have had, um, you know, that just as some of the for like you know, Uber for uh, laundry and stuff like that. Um, some are coming up against regulatory issues and things like that. Do you, wh- where do you see those issues um, coming into play? And do you see them as kind of being uh, uh, something that'll stop the growth of this, you know, same day on demand delivery um, kind of explosion that we're seeing? Um, I, I think there's a couple of things. I think that uh, the number one reason is that it's still not clear in this market. Um, if a delivery associate, and then I'm talking especially about bikers and walkers, mm-hmm. uh, can be an independent contractor. Right. So what you see in the, uh, in the Uber model is that every single uh, DA, is uh, an in, is independent, but ultimately means that uh, the cost per delivery is much lower. Uh, but there is also a big part of liability involved. Right. Because take an example: if you have a package, I, me as an uh, as an individual, I order a, a package to be delivered by Uber. This Uber messenger get into an accident. Who is liable? Is it the messenger? Because he's an independent contractor. Uh, does he have insurances in place? No. Um, is it Uber? No, because Uber is just a technology that connects uh, the consumer with the messenger. Um, so who is liable? Is it maybe myself? Because why? I provide it. I ask for this messenger. It's my package. He's working at that moment for me as an independent contractor. So where are the, who needs to have the insurance in place? Um, the second part is what you see is the workers' compensation. Workers' comp for, uh, for bikers is extremely high. Extremely high. It's, uh, it's one of the highest uh, in the United States for any job. So you have to realize that IAF, as a, as a messenger company, all my uh, messengers, DAs, are employees, mm-hmm. which means they're all W-2, they're all on payroll. The advantage that I have is that I can uh, dictate my, my, uh, my messengers how to behave, how to communicate, how to be dressed, how to, you mention it. Right. Uh, but this comes with a price. Why this comes with a price? I have to pay social security. I have to pay a workers' comp. Um, you mention it, and uh, companies like Uber, they don't. But ultimately, means and this is a very interesting piece, is that we are working with certain clients who used to work with, uh, for example, with Uber. Mm-hmm. And um, what you saw is that, uh, for example, if it rains or snows, if it's an independent contractor, you cannot force them to come out. Uber uh, has deep pockets, so what they do now, they give an additional bonus if you will come in the rain or in the snow. Uh, where we, as an uh, as all employees, I'm sorry, if you are an employee, you work for us, we take care of your unemployment, social security, you mention it. Uh, yes, the weather sucks, uh, 
uh, but we expect you to do the deliveries. Does that mean I can have bikers outside because safety is for me the number one thing? So does that mean can I have bikers outside when it snows or when it's really bad weather out? No, uh, but at the other side, uh, I have enough walkers out on the street and drivers who can do the deliveries. And, and you see there that companies like Uber uh, is, uh, is lacking. Um, besides all that, um, if they, the, the messenger gets uh, 80% from Uber for each delivery they do. Um, they do deliveries for a very low price. At the moment, Uber is buying uh, this marketplace. Right. So like <laughs> but for how long can they do this? Because right. at a certain moment, their investors are also asking uh, for, hey, when are we going to see profit? Right. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, and you read a lot about this, the kind of the independent versus W-2 workers in the on-demand market and some of the issues that have come up, uh, regulatory or otherwise. Um, you were talking about, you know, like that, you know, there's, um, you have say over the way they dress and the quality and, and the, you know, there's liability issues. And so that, that's like an interesting piece that, like you said, is kind of, it hasn't been fully figured out yet in the market, you know. Um, and I think there's one other big thing is that we see very clear, and again, I work with companies like Amazon myself mm -hmm. and, um, and with some other very large players um, in this marketplace. And what we see is if you have an amazing technology, but there is a delivery associate who does the delivery and he is rude, not professional, uh, you mention it, um, and, but the technology is amazing. Um, would you place the order again with this company? Probably not, because the delivery associate at the end is your face. Right. He is my, uh, I can have the best talk with my clients and say, we are the best, we are this, we are that. Uh, but at the end, it's the messenger or the DA who reflects uh, what my company is about. And this is why we are investing um, a lot of money and a lot of time in uh, dressing them up, training them. And it's not just training how an application works. No, it is really training for what to say, how to react, how to, uh, how to do a delivery. You have residentials, you have retail, you have corporate environments. Um, in a retail environment, if you are a biker, you don't throw your bike against a store window. The store window is the face world for the retailer. Um, if we hear it once, there are employees, they sign a handbook. It states very clear in the handbook. In a corporate environment, let's say the receptionist went to uh, the restroom. Um, so the messenger comes, the receptionist is not there. My messengers, they are waiting. They are waiting on the outside. They may be calling the dispatch and said, I'm here, but there is nobody here. Or they give it some time where you see with independent contractors, they're going to walk around the office. They're going to look. Why? Because first of all, they have to do as many deliveries as possible because the more deliveries they do, uh, the more money they are making. I'm not saying for Dutch Express that's not the case, but with us it works with more kind of a bonus commission system where we guarantee every single uh, delivery associate from at least minimum salary. The harder he works, the more work he does, uh, the more money he can make. Yeah. So which segment do you see, you know, in the next three to five years um, in, for like the same day on demand delivery, um, which segment do you see growing the most in that? So like retail or restaurant or anything that we haven't mentioned? Uh, for sure retail, because what you see now is that the big, the big dot com players, uh, they came now with uh, on demand uh, deliveries. And you see that the, the big retailers are uh, starting now to open their eyes and started to look into it. And some of them have solutions, but it's all, everything is very uh, in, the, in, in, in the beginning. Um, and we see this as a huge, huge, huge growth. Mm -hmm. um, the, only, the only part what keeps being challenging in this industry is the, is the cost. Um, people uh, want to have it as cheap as possible and the best service, but um, a delivery and a warehouse costs money. And, and, and this is what the question is going to be in the future. Is the consumer willing to pay uh, for this particular labor? Right. Yeah, and I guess the jury's still out on that. Um, that's going to, you know, what it's going to look like. But I, it's, you know, you said retail, and I was thinking the same thing because I've been reading a lot. We talked about how Amazon is kind of this big player. Uh, there's been reading and writing a lot about how, you know, the, 
retail, the traditional big box stores like you were talking about, are trying to kind of gain uh, traction in the world that Amazon has been playing in. And so I, I agree with you. I think that retail is also going to be um, the biggest growth. And I'm interested in seeing what happens in the next three to five years. And, um, you know, if I'm going to, you know, if I want to buy like, a, you know, whatever the equivalent of an iPhone will be in five years, if I want to have it in an hour, like, am I going to be willing to pay more for that? Uh, I'm interested to see if that's where expectations get to. Uh, it'll yeah, it, I'll give a very simple example. I'm currently a phone, a smartphone, and you drop your smartphone, it breaks. Mm -hmm. Now you have to call, if you have insurance, you call the insurance company, or you have to go to uh, a store and get a new one, etc. Uh, think about it, it should be in a way that it's one phone call away to T-Mobile or whoever the provider is or the insurance company. And in the current uh, infrastructure, it should be possible that you get a new phone delivered uh, within an hour. Right. Um, so in that case, there are many opportunities. The other big opportunity, what there is, what I see is that, um, and I'm talking especially about the big, the main big cities, and let's take New York then as an example, retail in New York is extremely expensive. Square footage costs a fortune. Now you have to imagine you uh, as a consumer buys an, uh, a shirt, and what is cheaper to get it out of the retail location and get it delivered, and you can fill this square footage with something else and something new, or you get it delivered out of your out of the warehouse where the warehouse is much cheaper. So it's much better to to flip products in a retail environment than in a warehouse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think that's really, I think that's interesting, and I and. Um... It's good to hear from you because you're, you know, you're on the, you have boots on the ground in, in this industry. I, I've kind of been imagining that that's the way it's going to look, and so um, I'm also excited. Obviously, you know, uh, definitely benefits from the growth in that market, um, and so it's, I think it's great. For you. Um, so that's actually all the time we have, uh, Marcus. I really appreciate you coming. On. It's been great. Um, why don't you tell everybody how they can get a hold of? Um, of uh, Dutch Express if they ever need your services. That's great. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's your website so for our audience? The, the website is dutch-express.com. Uh -huh, Dutch-express.com. Yes, and we're also always available by 212-717-5555. Okay. Thanks so much, Marcus. I really appreciate it, and have a, have a great day. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful day.